Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate my workflow for a picture of an animal. I call it my fur and feathers workflow. And I make no claims that this is the only way that anyone should ever process any image of any animal and all those other ways are wrong. What I'm hoping to accomplish is that by showing you my workflow, I might teach you something about On One that you didn't know. And then you'd be able to incorporate that into your workflow. Now, as far as this image, it's a picture of a baby ocelot that was taken at the Buffalo Zoo. I used a Nikon D500 camera with a Nikon 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Um, it was shot at 200 millimeters, and the exposure was 1 125th of a second at f8, and the ISO was 12,800. Now, right off the bat, I often do something a little bit differently than what most photographers may do. I usually don't do anything in the develop module when I'm processing an image of an animal. The reason being is if you go over to the develop module, the adjustments in the overall settings part of the develop module are global. Meaning if I come in here and I want to open up shadows, let's say, I'm opening up everywhere. That's not necessarily what I always want to do, especially for an image of an animal, especially for an image of an animal in a zoo. You'd like the animal to be very prominent in your picture, but you don't want the surroundings usually to be as prominent. You want the animal to kind of jump out. Because the adjustments here are global, that always won't allow you to accomplish that. So with our processing, we could make the animal pop out and make the surroundings of the animal not as noticeable if we use the effects module and take advantage of filter masks, which aren't available here. So what I will do typically with an animal shot, now if it was like a herd of something, you know, then it, the environment is part of the picture, then I'll come in here and do global tone and color adjustments. But what, what I will do, with an animal picture that usually is a portrait like this one is I will make sure that the white balance is correct. So I'll come in here and do any white balance adjustments and I'll look at my lens corrections and make sure that it found my lens, which it has. Then I'll go right into the effects module. Now, I don't think I've stressed it enough in the previous videos, but I'll say it again here in that usually you want to try to get rid of noise is early on in your workflow as possible because especially in the effects module if you start piling on filters you're going to really enhance the noise often and it will be more difficult then to get rid of the noise so the first thing I'm going to do is add a noise reduction filter this was shot with an ISO of 12,800 so there is a considerable amount of noise so as I zoom in you can see there's quite a bit of noise and as I look at it the noise is more noticeable on the background. It's not as noticeable on Nico. The cat's name is Nico. It's not as noticeable on his face. So I'm going to look at the background and I'm really just going to worry about that. And then I'll apply a mask and take away the noise reduction or at least part of the noise reduction on Nico's face, which may have softened his fur a little bit. Because remember, when you're reducing noise, you're smoothing things out and you tend to lose some detail. So I don't want to lose the detail on Nico's fur, especially his face. I want to keep it. So I'm going to do that trade-off. I'm going to accept a little bit of noise on his face, but I want that detail there. So um, there's a lot of noise here. So there's color noise as well. So we're going to turn color noise probably all the way up. We'll turn luminance noise considerably up. I'm going to bring detail down because I really am not trying to preserve any detail. My whole goal with the noise reduction filter is to obliterate the main noise back here and you can see it did. Now as we pull over and we look at Nico's face and I turn it off, you can see it did smooth out the detail slightly 
And the noise really isn't as noticeable. It's a little bit noticeable in here in some contrast edges, but it's not really as noticeable on his face. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a mask. I have the noise applied everywhere. It's global. I really want only a portion of the noise applied, and I want it applied, not applied as heavily on his face. So I'm going to paint out the part of the noise. Sorry about that. I'm going to take the opacity down to 50 uh, or so percent. So I'm going to only apply half of this setting on Nico's face. And what I going to do is I'm going to click down with the left mouse button and I'm going to start painting on his face and I want to make one pass um, over his entire face and try to catch everywhere. If I let go of the left mouse button and I click down again as you know when you're painting with a brush at 50 percent or any percentage less than a hundred each brush stroke is cumulative but it's only cumulative if I let go of the left mouse button. If I leave my left mouse button clicked in I could go over and over the spot and I'll only get 50% in this case because I have 50% set. So I'm going to remove this noise reduction best I can and make sure that I didn't miss any spot on his face. So I'm going to let go of the left mouse button and I'm going to take a look at my mask. And you can see I did pretty good. So that's fine. So I'm happy with the noise reduction. Now, the next thing I'm going to be concerned about is the tone, the tone qualities of the image. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a tone enhancer. So I'm going to come and I'm just going to eyeball it. And typically what I like to do is I jump right to highlights. And I like to bring highlights down until I see some detail in the highlights. In this case, it's his fur. And it's not doing a whole lot. Sometimes it doesn't. But I'll bring highlights down, I guess all the way. And I get a little more detail in his fur. Then I'm going to go to the shadows and I'm going to open those up a bit. Now you can see as I'm opening up the shadows, it's opening up the shadows everywhere because as it is now, it's a global adjustment. I really don't want the shadows opened up on that background. So I'll probably use a mask here as well. So I open up shadows, so I've made it a little bit flatter. So now I want to add some contrast uh, to the image. Um, typically, I'll do the contrast before I do a white and black point, and I'll, I prefer to use curves. So I'm going to go down here to curves as opposed to the contrast slider. It's just I could be a little more precise with curves, usually where the contrast goes. Meaning if I go way up here uh, and push up, I'm really getting the Bright, I'm making the brightest parts brighter. But if I move this down a little bit, I'm going more into the midtones. So I have a little more control of where I'm adding the contrast when I use the curves adjustment. So like that, I think is good. Now I'll come in here and I'll get a white and black point. And I'll get that kind of auto point by holding the J key in and moving the whites to the right until I get red bleeding through. And then I'll back it off until the red is totally gone. It's right there. It's a tiny bit of red right there, but that's okay. Now, same thing for the blacks. I'll hold the J key in and move blacks down until I get blue coming through. I'm not so concerned about the background again, so I'm mainly looking at Nico. Now, for landscapes, I'd like to have my blacks clip a little bit. When you have blue come through, that means you're clipping blacks. But for portraits of animals or people, I usually don't like any clipping at all, whites or blacks. So I will move this to the right until I do not see any more blue on Nico. I don't care about the rest of the image, actually. But it seems to be taking it away everywhere. So right there is a good black point. So as I go before and after, you can see how it's just making Nico uh, pop out a little more. And actually, I don't mind what it did to the background as well. So I don't think I'm going to be using a mask. But if I don't like what it's doing to the background, I will definitely would use a mask. And I would uh, mask out the background so this effect is only being applied on Nico. But one neat thing about effects, remember, is I could add another tone enhancer. So if I wanted to add a second one, 
I could have the second one just adjust the background and then invert my mask so that the mask isn't affecting Nico at all. So keep that in mind. I don't need to do that here. I was kind of hoping I would. That's why, why I picked this image and I didn't try processing this image ahead of time, which I probably should have. But keep that in mind. You could always add more than one filter of the same filter. So if I needed to adjust the background in a different way, I could get another tone enhancer filter, invert my mask, put, copy the mask here, and be good to go. But we're good to go with that one tone enhancer right there. So now I want to do something with detail. I want to bring out sharpen. I want to sharpen the image, or I want to do dynamic contrast, which kind of does the same thing in my opinion. Um, so we're going to look at both. Usually what I'll do is I'll look at both. So I'll put dynamic contrast in, and you can see that really made Nico pop. It's a little bit too heavy. Um, you could come in here with the presets or use opacity, which I'll often do if I'm in a hurry. I'll just bring opacity down. But usually what I like to do is I like to zero out um, everything here. And then what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll start with the large and I'll move that to the right and see what it does. And I could see it's enhancing pretty much everything. So I'll put that down. Then I'll come medium and I'll move that up. And I could see that that's enhancing Nico a little more than the background. All right. So that's medium. Then I'll come in with small. And I kind of like the what a small is doing to Nico. Didn't do much to the background. There's before and there's after. We could even bring that up a little more. There's before and there's after. And then I could just bump medium up just a touch. Bring small down just a little. Before, after. I'm always careful not to over sharpen my image. Uh, it usually doesn't look right. <laughs> And that's probably one of the main things I see a lot of photographers uh, that are just learning post-processing do is they tend to over-sharpen their image a little bit. So I mentioned I'm usually undecided whether I should use dynamic cont contrast or actual sharpening. So what I'll do is I'll apply the one, then turn it off. Then I'll go and I'll do the other one. And I'll do, uh, oops, didn't want noise reduction, apologize. I'll do uh, sharpening. And then what I'll do here is, again, is you could, you know, look at fixed focus, look at screen. Often screen, I like what screen does. That's one of the presets here. And there's a before, after, before, after. Kind of like that. But what I most often do is for an animal picture, I pick progressive sharpening. I think that usually works the best. Then what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll move the amount up. And then I'll move detail just up, just up to something. And then I'll kind of move these two sliders around until I see the effect I want. Probably didn't do much there. Let me go back to screen. Um, it's hard to say, but mainly I'll come in here. I'll use, I like progressive sharpening. I think that works best with feathers and or fur and I'll move the two sliders. I usually don't worry about the other sliders. There's not often any highlights or shadows or skin of, a, of course, with an animal that you need to protect. So, and threshold really isn't going to be applicable when you're doing this adjustment or this enhancement to your image. So um, I just eyeball it. And a lot of times I'll walk away from my computer and then come back and look at it and see if it did it. And again, I don't tend to put a ton of sharpening on an image. So to me, that is pretty good right there. Then what I'll do is I'll turn that off and I'll turn dynamic contrast back on, kind of compare them. Already I could tell I, I like the sharpening better. So I just get rid of dynamic contrast by deleting it. And I just use sharpening. And I think that's fine. Now I finish it off with a vignette. 
I usually like very subtle vignettes, so I'll just click on the subtle and take a look at it. And I like that. And that is my image. As far as I'm concerned, I'm done. There's before and there's after. You can see there's not a ton of processing overall done to the image. Um, what I did is I removed noise, mainly from the background uh, behind Nico, not so much on his face. And then I enhanced the tone on his face. I sharpened it a bit, and I added a vignette. Uh, not a ton of processing. Now what I may do, which I didn't do here, is before the vignette, is I would add a color enhancer uh, filter, which I might do on some images, and I would take vibrance up. I usually don't want to mess with saturation too much, but I would bring vibrance up a little bit. I don't really think it was needed on this shot, so I didn't do it. Usually, it depends on the photographer, but most photographers want to try to keep their animal images as natural as possible. They don't want to give a false uh, representation of that animal. Uh, if the colors of the fur or the feathers weren't that color, you don't want to show it off, you know? So, especially if you work professionally as a wildlife photographer, you want it as um, original as possible. You don't want to give any false colors, false tones. Uh, the animal doesn't have those shades of gray. You don't want to create them in post. So you want it as natural as you can. So actually what I did here was mostly correction. I got rid of uh, the noise in the image. I just enhanced the sharpness a little bit to correct for any lens issue and or the um, noise issue that I got rid of, which might have softened it a little bit. I just made it a little sharper. And then I added a vignette just to help bring everyone's attention towards our cat. And that's it. Now I'm not going to, I've exported in the past several times, so I don't think I need to export in this video. It's long enough. But that is my fur and or feathers workflow. Again, take it for what it's worth. Hopefully I taught you something in this video that you didn't know. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.